My name is Jessica Siegel. I'm an artist from New York City, based in Brooklyn. I have a practice that spans sculpture, photography, and video. There's three things located at Spaces. Um, in this room, so behind me, you see it's called a Cuban chug, and it's a handmade boat built with the purpose for um, a illegal sort of migration from Cuba into mainland USA. It's from 19... 95 until 2017 was actually kind of under the authority to one degree or another that um, a Cuban landing on um, American soil could ask for asylum and have expedited citizenship. That policy changed in 2017 under President Obama and so these kind of vessels would be something very common that one would see sort of off the coast of southern Florida which is 90 miles from Cuba. Now of course that flow has stopped and in 2017 as well, in March, there were maybe, I knew of about 42 to 50 boats that were sort of along the South Florida coast and they all kind of got picked up and moved and trashed. And I really wanted to salvage one for austerity as some kind of archive that, yeah, talks to, um, I guess, the, like the willpower in a way uh, and the ingenuity and the desire that's in this object and the sort of really important chapter of North American history. So what you're actually seeing is um, there's kind of a steel frame around which uh, steel is sort of bent and riveted together and there's a Isuzu car engine that's kind of put in the middle and the yeah, drive chain is connected to a propeller. So you have this uh, functional uh, object but um, the design of this one as well is really particular uh, which is another reason that I chose it. When you are walking along the Florida coast you can kind of see some similar designs and you think it might have been the same boat builder in Cuba who was like commissioned in a way to create this vessel. So that's on the south end of the wall and next to it actually is video work that kind of shows the boat being towed like it shows the process of what it took to bring it off the uninhabited island um, off the coast of Florida to mainland, which was an ordeal in itself. You have this sort of uh, buried boat that had to be dug up and it had to be um, pulled behind a towboat, but it wasn't seaworthy anymore. It might have been sitting on the beach for 10 years, it's possible. Um, so we had to kind of continually pump out water. And so you kind of see this video that shows a bit the, like, the violence of the water when that boat's kind of pushing through. Um, and you don't see any passengers on the inside. For this piece, I interviewed a number of people, um, including a Cuban refugee who had come uh, on her own in a similar passage. And she was really adamant that she remain anonymous, and I wanted to keep that anonymity of the, um, yeah, of the people who use the vessel. And to use the vessel as, a, as like a body proxy in that way. So there's two other things in the exhibition. One is a set of cast footprints that are embedded into the concrete floor. And those are taken from forensic casts that I took on the northern border between Canada and the United States. And I'd say since 2017, there's been maybe 55,000 people who have walked over the single farm road into Canada seeking asylum when denied in the United States or thinking they'd be denied in the United States. Um, normally that's illegal. You can't um, ask for asylum in another country in North America after you've been denied in your port of entry. But there's a couple different roads where that can be, um, like you can't ask in a normal border crossing, but there's kind of been these normalized routes that you can pass and um, will get arrested, but then can sort of ask for asylum and go through procedures. The third item I have here is a silk screen that's taken from a New York Times article from 1922. So it's not just it's not just Cubans leaving Cuba after the revolution to come to the United States that use the same passage. There are a number of like a number of different ethnic groups and nationalities that were using this passage to come into the states as well when they no longer had options to sort of emigrate uh, legally. And that included the Jewish population after the Exclusion Acts of 1921 and 24. So my great-grandparents were Romanian Jews that were escaping this kind of disenfranchisement in Romania. They came in 1917 to New York. If they'd waited five years, there's a good chance they wouldn't have been able to emigrate legally. So I do consider like the thousands of people that came, like these sort of night voyages and these, you know, fishing boats or handmade boats, and think about that sort of 
I mean, that's almost a hundred years ago now, and I'm thinking about now and the sort of reducing quota of how many refugees the United States is accepting and the, the impact of that 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 could have, and that it's a larger story, right? Like, who, you know, I'm now I'm a national, like, I've been naturalized, I'm an American, right? Like, how many generations does that take, right? When you're no longer like an immigrant in some way. So um, I wanted to kind of pair the boat with the story of um, something that I think ma many people don't know about. Like, I think um, I wanted to kind of bring that into the conversation to have it be a wider view of these sort of uh, political cycles that we're going through.